Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, this could be the morning, this could be extremely late at night, it could even be the afternoon. Uh, we're here in uh, lovely Madagascar. This is uh, basically just off the west coast. We are in the northern part of the island, uh, the more tropical side of the island. And uh, during our journey today, we're going to have an opportunity to get a pretty good look at the countryside. So when it came time to pick out the airplane that I wanted to do for this one, my initial thought was to do it in the VL3 or like one of the bigger shocks or even the 152. And I said, you know what, we've never actually had a chance to fly this thing in action. And um, this plane is literally the definition of, I guess you want to call it a Piper Cub, but maybe even lighter than a Piper Cub. And I find that kind of fun. One of the neat things is if you actually look at the weight and balance on it, you'll see that it doesn't even have weight for somebody other than the pilot, which is, like I said, blows my mind. But this is actually a pretty cool airplane. All right, let's go ahead and get this party started. We'll go ahead and get everything all fired up. You know that you've got yourself a good airplane uh, when you have a choke handle as opposed to, you know, a conventional one. Just go ahead and crack the throttle real quickly here. Turn on our magnetos, which are big, big metal switches, which I think is just awesome. We've got a warning in the alternator. That's fine. I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to come over here and crank, and you got all of those Rotax engines. They start for you right away. Now, one of my buddies was telling me that the big thing with the Rotax engines is they tend to run really hot on the ground, but way too cold in the air. So it's kind of an interesting thing. Flip on our avionics. So uh, we... That, that's it. <laughs> that's what we get. I notice that uh, we don't have a GPS on here. We're not using anything else. Uh, for those of you who are joining us today, uh, make sure you set your players to all players. We're in the East USA server. If I go pop it up real quick, you can go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Again, the airplane we're in, now, uh, if you need something that can be matched, uh, you can certainly do perfectly fine in a VL3. You can do perfectly fine in pretty much any of these smaller ultralight planes. This thing's top speed on a good day downhill is maybe 90 knots, but our total flight time today is going to be right around 31, 32 minutes, depending on how many different places to land. Uh, how you doing, Steph? So let's see who we have today. We have Laufer Rog, welcome back. Monday Rico, welcome back. IB Type R, welcome back. Renter Bridge, I forgive me that I don't remember you. I head to the shed. You've been having a great time so far. Uh, Simon, welcome back. Tus and John, welcome back. And I don't remember Teutonic Fall, so forgive me if I'm wrong here. But um, it's time to get going, uh, so we'll go ahead and get going. Now, this aircraft is uh, called the Ultra because it has the shortest takeoff of pretty much any. It's an ultra short takeoff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my flaps down. I'm going to go ahead and push my right pedal about that far forward. Hold on the brakes. Go ahead and give this thing full throttle. Let go of the throttle. Hold that right foot. Hold that right foot. And we are airborne. <laughs> you got to be a little careful with it, though, when you do that, because it has a real strong tendency to depart on you. And that's it. That's a literally as much takeoff distance. I was measuring it the other day. You can get it in about 75, 80 feet. It's uh, certainly not a CH-701, and I think we're going to stall. Wee-hee! <laughs> you got to be quick on this one. All right, we're going to nose over. Go ahead and bring up one notch of flaps. Pick up a little bit of speed. Next notch of flaps, and we are on our way. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh man, I almost died there, which would have been a pretty, pretty bad start for a thing here. So let's go ahead and get on our way. We're basically going to be heading mostly north. There's a couple of spots along the way that we're going to be using to kind of check out some of the different sites that we can see kind of along the countryside. Uh, for those of you curious about what airport this is, this is a Foxtrot Mike November Tango. It is Zara Tanana. I'd actually I get that one pronounced properly for once. That never happens, I swear. Um, so Chris is asking a little bit about uh, who's got a stick they recommend. The one I've got is pretty good. I can't actually endorse anything. I'm just going to say I have a VKB gunfighter. I don't know if that helps at all, but um, it's a little on the pricey side. But I really I don't think I can ever go back to a Thrustmaster T1600, which is what I had previously. All right, go ahead and check my switches are in the right spot. All right, cruising in this thing is uh, pretty straightforward. You're just going to drop yourself down to about 25 inches. And that's about as complicated as this thing is going to get. Uh, we have no automatic pilot on here. Um, I'm amazed we even have trim. I think trim is basically you just sort of uh, move yourself forward in the seat a little bit, and the nose starts to drop. And if you move yourself back in the seat, the nose starts to come back up a little bit. But I'm pretty sure it's a little more complicated than that. I'm just not going to pretend I know. I'm going to get this thing nice and trimmed down. Like I said, we're mostly going to be in the north directions. So we're going to be right here on these uh, large foothills pretty much the entire time. There's a couple spots along the flight. We're going to go ahead and uh, try to land these little tiny airplanes and see just how effective this can be. So take a look around. Uh, I can't help but remember when we were flying in Jordan, you had the uh, Wadi Rum, which was basically this incredibly red desert. But this is actually the color of the savanna that you have on this side of things. And again, you get these kind of like lazy rivers and everything. Usually when uh, folks think about Madagascar, or at least when I think about Madagascar, I usually think of uh, the northern part where we've got all the rainforests and things like that. It's just kind of cool. All right, getting bounced around a little bit. We're fairly low altitude here. doesn't surprise me. Bring the nose up just a tiny bit. Another cool thing I was reading, I actually went to the marketing webpage of this particular airplane. Uh, apparently this thing is a tremendously, tremendously lightweight. I was actually looking at it earlier and I realized it's got carbon fiber pretty much everywhere. And um, I mean, look above my head, there's just a little bit of aluminum, basically. You can even see the welds that they put in here, which I absolutely love details like that. You know, it just makes you feel that much safer in the event that you get some kind of bad weather uh, during your flight, of course. 
yes, uh, Martin uh, brings up the fact that Gladiator is excellent. It is really, really good. It's incredibly smooth, and there's some things you can do to actually make it smoother. Uh, speaking of which, for anybody who has a Twix, which is the uh, TWCS, is that Thrustmaster throttle system, you probably would know it if you looked it up. Uh, one of the tips I've found is that you can actually grease the thing after taking it apart. It is like it makes your joystick from a $100 joystick to like a $300 joystick for about 30 bucks, And one of those tubes will last you a lifetime. It's pretty awesome. Just something you can go poke around online and actually look up. It's pretty awesome. All right, we're getting ourselves a pretty bit of a crosswind here. It doesn't surprise me too, too much. Again, if you want to imagine the savanna here, depending on what time of year, of course, this time of year, we're going towards the winter, so it's going to be a little bit colder than it would be normally, but you can get some pretty strong. Uh, one thing I was reading when I was doing a little bit of background on this particular flight is apparently cyclones are a very real and very dangerous force on these islands. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Pete, remember, I'm just using trim here. See how everybody's doing behind us today. <laughs> this is like um, the V8 supercar racing in Australia. You know, you have these tremendously powerful cars, but you don't have a road that's terribly big, so they're all right on top of each other for about 90% of the flight. It's absolutely the most fun that you're going to have. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pass right over this little valley here, and we're going to find ourselves a nice, safe spot to land. And um, we're just going to put it on the ground, drop off some supplies at a local village, and then we're going to continue making our way up towards uh, Faxtrot Mike November Papa. It's not as though we have a GPS on this thing, so we're kind of relying mostly on dead reckoning. Fortunately, I did practice this one, so I have a general idea where we're supposed to be going today. So uh, no promises if uh, we get terribly lost or anything here. I mean, it's only the second largest island nation on planet Earth, so it can't be too hard, right? Okay, that's just chaos. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. This is uh, the most chaos I think we've ever seen. So if you want to learn practice... Oh, look at this! I was actually thinking about flying these for this one, but I ended up going with uh, this one because it was just a little bit simpler for what I thought we needed. All right, so this Rotax engine, theoretically, if my buddy is correct, it should be running a little bit on the cold side. Uh, yeah, look at that. 108 degrees in the cylinder head temperature is actually glowing blue to warn me that it's cold. So they actually got that detail fairly right, which I think is absolutely pretty cool. All right, again, fingertip controls. Uh, for those of you who are fans of VR who are thinking, hey, I want to try out an airplane in VR, this is the plane to try out because the performance on this aircraft is butter. There's absolutely no digital display except for this one over here, meaning that your frame rate is going to be amazing. It's also nice and slow, too. Hey, you passing me? I'm sorry, this is as fast as I can go, and I'm already redlining the engine right now, so eh, we'll deal with it. All right, so we're going to sing into this valley here, and I'm going to try to find a nice safe spot to put down. I think there's a village over there that's basically looking for some supplies for us. Check this out. Could you imagine being on your little ATV and kind of just ripping along this, kicking up a dust trail that everybody can see for about 20 miles? That's just amazing. You get the little stone wall kind of uh, holding off this little tiny farm here, and you get these little encampments right here. A uh, fun, useless piece of trivia for anybody who wants it, and again, uh, probably nobody. But apparently, uh, tradition states in different parts of Madagascar that your house should always face the west with the windows, and the east should have no windows. And apparently, that's something that I was reading. I don't know how true that actually is. I just find that interesting. And I'm kind of curious if we can find a house that the back side of the side we're on is basically not going to have any windows on it. <laughs> awesome, Sam. You're not going to irritate anybody. Don't worry. I'm just annoyed that you're going to have to basically be sitting on, basically riding on the propeller this entire flight. All right, we're going to come hang up this way. I think I see our first, whoa, I think I just got past. We're going to go make our way right over here, and I think there's a good spot. Now, let's see here. We want to find a nice, safe spot that we can land and not worry too, too much about, you know, some of the terrain that we're going to be dealing with here. Let me study what we got here. We've got a little valley here. We've got this little hill. I'm looking at this little intersection kind of between these two spots. That looks like a pretty safe spot. I'm going to go ahead and get this plane back under control. Man, this is a pitchy plane. Not, not, the, not the B word. All right, so if we came in down here, I think we'd be pretty good. I'm just kind of working out. I'm kind of a fan of right here. That's going to be our destination. So unfortunately, I don't have the button that I have on the Russian planes where you can click a switch and press a button and it shoots a flare out the side to kind of let you know where we're passing. But we'll go ahead and do our first little landing operation right on the top of the hill that I'm pointing at right now. So for this one, uh, the wind for me anyway is uh, coming directly out of the west off the water, which is a little ways that way. So for us, we're basically going to come swing up this route and come down here. Obviously, when you're landing downhill, be very, very gentle on the brakes and a tail drag airplane. Otherwise, you're going to end up eating dirt. And of course, you can always rescue yourself by mashing the Y key on the keyboard super duper fast if you have the reflexes for it. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think right, right in here, right this little smidge of dark right here. I think this would be good. <laughs> yeah, I held off on the Spitfire. I think the only plane I'm really looking forward to buying is going to be the uh, PMDG DC-6. Got my fingers crossed. I have a great idea to take us up to Venezuela uh, for us if we do get that. And of course, if you don't have that airplane, then you'd be perfectly fine in like a Beechcraft King Air or something like that. 
All right, let's go ahead and exercise this aircraft's ridiculously short takeoff and landing capabilities. I'm not going to be too nervous. Gently, you, know, you don't want to be landing on the top of a mountain. Who knows how many nasty rocks are. Again, this little loop right here is going to be my little first landing spot. Keep an eye on things. Looks pretty good. Let's see how everybody's doing behind us. Nice. Everybody's doing perfect. I'm just going to concentrate on landing. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks like somebody put something in here, actually, at one point. And yeah, there's a little tower. Let's put my head up over here. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, it's not a tower. It's a tree. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Let's take advantage of this tremendously short landing distance here. Now, one of the fun tricks I've learned with this plane is if you hold the nose up a little bit, get down to the a safe flap speed, you can dump the flaps and then push the nose right down and everybody goes flying past you. <laughs> That's just fun. All right, let's stick this thing down on the ground. I'm like in that spot basically right there. There's like a little dry creek. We've got the big tundra tires on this thing, so I'm not concerned at all as far as the bumpy landing goes here. So the landing speed on this one is basically zero. Uh, you can bring this thing all the way down to about 60, 70 kilometers per hour, and it doesn't get too weird on you. Anything less than 60 kilometers an hour, and you're most likely going to depart and crash really, really nastily. So uh, kind of keep that in the back of your head. All right, I'm sinking a little bit too much here. Give myself a little bit of throttle. I mean, this thing is more like flying a model airplane than it is flying like a regular airplane. All right, that's looking pretty decent right there. Go ahead and cut it down. We're going to be landing uphill, and then we're going to be landing downhill, but that's all right. Go right, meet me by the tree for those of you who are going to join me on a landing. There we go. We've got one tire down. We're going to pull that nose up. Go ahead and dump the flaps. And we're down. <laughs> nice. All right, let's see if anybody wants to try to join us on our first little landing here. I'm going to go ahead and park us by this tree and get ready for my takeoff. <laughs> just enjoy the sight for a second here. It's just absolutely pretty here. All right, let's see if anybody wants to try to land. Oh, we got head to the shed came in. Oh, easy in the brakes, easy in the brakes. <laughs> All right, let's see if anybody wants to come fly down here and uh, join us. Uh, head to the shed, nicely done. That's a 152. I wouldn't normally land this. Ooh, Laffle Rog, nicely done, nicely done. Simon, careful. Don't depart, don't depart, don't depart. All right, I'm going to enjoy the view for half a second here. I can see uh, IB Type R is uh, doing a little circle. Basically, run interference for us. All right, let's go ahead and get ready for takeoff. I'm going to go ahead and pop two notches of flaps. Go ahead and give it full throttle. I'm not going to do anything silly here. I'm just going to take advantage of the uh, engine itself. There we are. And we are on our way. <laughs> Gotta love that. All right, let's continue north. Oop, that was a little too much, but that's all right. One of these days, i got to get me a new pair of rudder pedals. Nice. I wonder what the locals are thinking about us right now. They're probably going, uh, what are these crazy guys doing? Why are there so many people here? How many people have ever been in this country and in a little airplane before? I'm sure in this place you probably have more helicopters than you have anything. There we go. All right, let's get going. We're going to get a little low to these trees, but that's all right. I got plenty of airspeed left. Drop it down to 25 inches, and that should get us cruising pretty darn good here. I think you're supposed to be about 5,000 RPM is kind of the sweet spot, but I'm worried about this. All right, let's do it. So now we're going to go ahead and exit the foothills, and we're going to make our way into one of these uh, very, very large valleys. Like I said, you're going to see a lot more terrain very similar to what we've seen so far. And then all of a sudden, you're going to see a bunch of lakes, and all these lakes are going to instantly turn themselves into this really, really busy kind of little mini city with no particularly tall buildings. It's actually pretty wild. Uh, Moby Mobius. I think that I recognize that one. I think I've got my trim almost perfect. Let's go see how everybody's doing behind us. Oop, everybody did their little landing, and they're catching up. I can go ahead and reduce to 5,000 RPM for a moment here to let everybody get caught up. There we go. I was actually looking at the CRJ, and I couldn't quite bring myself to do it. You know, those regional jets are just one too small. If we had something like a Boeing 717, uh, yeah, 717, I should say, or like an Airbus A318, that's probably about the smallest I'd go and still have a jet engine unless it's military. Have you ever flown with digital theme park Zoolander 64? I'm actually not sure who that is, or I'm not sure what that is in the event that it's a what, not a who. You'll have to tell me what you mean by that, a guy who types.
There we are. All right. So we're basically heading right for a Moby Mobius here. All right. It's a little bumpy, but not too bad. I think head to the shed's got the right idea. He's the only one who has a GPS. I'll head to the shed, check your flaps. Looks like he's got 10 degrees. Yeah, it looks about 10 degrees. Sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> That's fine, no problem. Now it's something I have to go look up later on to discover exactly what it is. <laughs> Actually, it's funny you say that, uh, Farmer Beavis, about the CJ. Um, I hate the nose on the CJ. <laughs> I know it's like the most petty thing in the world, but I actually like the longitude better than the CJ. The CJ will definitely get you there. It is definitely a smooth jet. Um, I'm not thrilled with the way the throttle works on it. I find it kind of, I don't want to call it unintuitive. It just doesn't feel right. But the uh, citation on the other side, the uh, longitude, that is a lot of airplane, and that thing is glorious inside. I hate to see what the retail price on something like that is. Ooh, Eric Bird, that is a uh, fighting words there. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the TBM because it can get just about anywhere and it's fast enough. It's true, Steph. I did not say anything about business jets. <laughs> like what I would love to see is, uh, you know, like a 1930s radial engine, twin engine, something or other, like, you know, the old Lockheed's or something like that. You know, an airplane where, you know, if you landed with both the engines you started with, you had a pretty good day kind of a thing. Those are just fun. And the navigation on that is just epic. Gives you something to do. All right, looks pretty good so far. 20 million for the longitude. That's actually way cheaper than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot more than that. <laughs> That's amazing. That is a lot cheaper. So, Eric, here's your homework now. You have to see if they have a bathroom on board. Now, it's one of those uh, very, very petty things, but um, people always think about business jets, you know, luxury travel. I know you're always sitting here basically going, oh, you know, I can't wait to have such and such or whatever. And then you realize that you're going to have to hold it until you get to the ground. Or if they do have a bathroom, it's basically a hole in the wall that's kind of has a little curtain on it or something like that. But remember, those business jets are a lot shorter than you really think they are. And, you know, I used to work with the museum. Uh, we actually had a Gulf Stream and Embraer across the street from us. And every once in a while, they'd be like, we need to do a test flight. You guys want to go for a flight? So uh, you'd probably go and uh, try that one out. And uh, you get to the end of that flight, and you're like, uh, um, I really wish you guys had a real bathroom on board. Sorry. Yeah, it was just kind of fun, though. Obviously loud, and they test the pressurization, and your ears would explode and everything. Really, really fun times. No GPS in the 152. Yeah, so basically my navigation instrument is uh, this thing right here. And uh, the fact that Moby Mobius apparently knows where we're going, and I'm just going to keep kind of flying that general direction right now. All right, we got Titanic. Uh, Simon's sneaking up. Head to the shed sneaking up. Awesome. All right, ready for some Madagascar trivia? I had to go look this all up earlier. So apparently, um, one of the biggest traditions here is a reverence for your dead. So what they'll actually do is every seven or eight years, they'll dig up their ancestors and um, wrap them in silk and then bury them back in the ground after a ceremony. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I actually think that's really, 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 really interesting. Uh, other interesting trivia is that the number one export money-wise is vanilla. So if you've ever had true, pure vanilla, 80% of it from the world comes from here, which I think is great. Uh, what was the other piece of trivia that I saw that was interesting? Uh, they're also a huge export is sweaters. All right, we're about halfway there. It's a good time to go ahead and find ourselves another safe spot to go ahead and uh, drop off some more supplies. Kind of go take a quick little peek. Uh, this doesn't look too bad right there if we kind of come in. There's also this really, 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 really tight, nasty bit down here. Uh, let's go take a look here. Is there something that we can get in that's something we really shouldn't be landing on? That's my favorite kind of things to land on. Honestly, these mountains are a little too steep for us. I'm going to wait until we get into the valley on the opposite side. Um... <laughs> Uh, no, I think it's great. Honestly, the default planes aren't bad. When we had FSX, the default planes were... Ah, ah. Everybody got carinado airplanes pretty much that week. Or you got the big PMDG 737, and, you know, you watched 600 hours of tutorial videos, and you still couldn't figure out why you got weird navigation problems halfway across the ocean. The TBM has a bathroom? That's actually... I know this sounds like, you know, this is, like, something shocking or whatever, but, like, believe it or not... This plane can stay in the air for five hours, but, like, look around. What would you do? For this one, you probably could just slow down and go out the window, I'm guessing. Well, let's see. The privacy diet is the most over-engineered thing in the world. I'd have to check that out, Farmer Beavis. It's, like, one of those things. Now, one of the fun things, if you want some extreme toilet trivia, is, uh, as anybody in the Air Force knows, it's called the honey bucket. And, of course, the first person to use it is the first person who has to clean it. 
So as a result, the trick here is uh, when you're doing these long flights, like in a B-52 or something, you go around all your crew members and you keep giving them coffee the entire flight because, you know, the moment somebody has to pull the trigger and they can't hold it anymore, that's the moment the entire ship's crew now goes and stops by because that one dude's obviously got stuck cleaning it. It's always kind of fun. That B-52 guy, by the way, is one of the funnest guys in the world to talk to at the museum. He basically said that he has bombed pretty much every major city in the entire United States at least once by radar. And it's just like, oh, that makes me feel better. All right, let's go find ourselves a nice safe spot to go ahead and land. That's actually pretty good right there. <laughs> I got the right idea. Yeah, I'm going to go for that one. Actually, wait a minute. What's off my nose? Prepare for everybody to go ripping by me again. Yep, right there. This is going to be our soft spot here. We're going to go drop off some supplies on the top of this mountain here. Yeah, I like that a lot better than that little one over there. That one looks a little too bumpy. Normally, by the way, when you're doing off-the-field landings, you always want to pass the runway that you're landing on first. Take a look around and make sure it's not something like, you know, like a log or like a zebra or I guess a lemur in this particular case. All right, I'm going to go slow down and pull that nose up and I'm bringing our first notch of flaps. I'm going to get it slowing down real quickly here. Again, I'm going to take advantage of the wind, which is coming out of my left ear. The port side, if you prefer. All right, let's go swing it around. Give it a little more throttle. I can feel it getting slow. I'm right up that hill. Again, always land uphill if you can. It's a little bit simpler. However, with the tail drag, you also have a higher probability of basically eating it. So be careful. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Yeah, this looks nice and soft. I'll go ahead and do a little bit of a slip. And we're just going to come bring this thing down nice and smoothly. And that looks like a pretty nasty spot to land. Bunk. And we're down. <laughs> we're down. Nicely done, smoking tire. I cheated. I flipped up my flaps. That is, a bush pilot actually taught me that trick. He says never do it in the real plane. Although what he would do, which is even more dangerous, is he'd hold on to this bar right here with his hand, and he'd adjust it on his way down, like the DLZ system that they actually have on the F-14 Tomcat for doing carrier landings. Pretty terrifying. All right, let's go get going. Do a hop takeoff. <laughs> I love that strategy. Give me another plane in flight sim that can do that reliably. All right, watch my feet. I don't want to deport because that would just be embarrassing on our live television here. Okay, let's get going. All right, um, let's see here. My compass is all goofed up here. Proceed. All right, good thing we haven't done... Uh, could you imagine us all doing gliders? All right, let's see here. Oh, I'm getting all sorts of comments about going to the bathroom now. Have you seen the Class Echo on Etsy? What do you think about it? Uh, Rothgar, could you tell me a little bit more about the Class Echo? I'm not sure what that is. I've never heard of it before. Uh, TBM has the most hours in the sim, CJ the second. Um, for me, as far as most hours in the sim, uh, without a doubt, it's probably going to be the TBM or the G36. The TBM is a really good plane. I like like the 8.7. I find the Airbus really boring. I know that's like scandalous, but the um, nice fly-by-wire version that you can get as an external mod, that one, that's a little more exciting. There's a lot to do there, and I really enjoy playing with that. I also like in flying that, um, oh my god, the Blario. That really, really, really old plane that's one of the payware planes. I think you can get about 35 miles an hour on it in a good day. I flew it across the English Channel, and I thought I was going to die like three or four times the whole flight. It was awesome. Weird. All right, let's drag ourselves down to our cruise speed here. No reason to overheat, over stress. <laughs> You're lucky you have that. <laughs> Somehow, our entire thing degrades to, uh, where do you go to the bathroom on the airplane? Ooh, wow, we've got a really good tub. Tanqueray, wait a minute, I remember you. All right, I got to pay attention to my flying here. This is one time I can't hide behind the uh, automatic pilot here. Freddy DB. Thanks, Freddy. I really, really appreciate that. Again, um, yeah, I look at I look at my numbers each week, and I have like 1% of what I had back in September, but I do it anyway because I know folks still enjoy it. And honestly, I love GA, and um, I'm not going to tell anybody anything secret, but I've got something that I'm working on that I think you guys are going to kick out of next month. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but let's just say it's right up everybody's alley, and it has something to do with flying, but it's not necessarily in the flight simulator. Uh, the Class Echo is a 4-inch touchscreen. Yes! So, in um, actually, we borrowed one of these at school. So we got a 6-inch monitor, and we attached one of the MFDs that you can buy, the Thrustmaster MFDs, to it. And you can actually like, push the buttons like you're on an F-16 and display what you saw in there. It is really awesome, and it's only like, I think it was like 75 bucks for everything. The MFDs are more expensive than the little USB TV, though. And uh, that was awesome. Oh, I think we're getting a little lost here. Hang on. Hang on. There's the river. That's good. Hold on a second. Yep. 
<laughs> just a little bit. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, I think we're back on track now. Woo! Okay, I think so. Hold on a second. Yeah, we know where that lake is. Okay, we're good, we're good. Awesome, Noel. Um, I love these group flights. It's just, it kills me the fact that we picked a place pretty much randomly on Earth, and I look behind me, and there's... <laughs> yes! <laughs> that, that makes my point, makes my point. <laughs> so if you ever need to catch up on any of these flights, um, you can either use time acceleration or you can use the SLU. It works spectacular. It basically just uh, gets you going in a real hurry. I actually have a video on how to use SLU next week, because apparently I did it for somebody and they didn't believe me, so I had to make a whole thing basically explaining it. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and continue our little cruise here. This is pretty nice. Uh, we get about, uh, I want to say, probably about 10 or 11 minutes before we should be coming down on the ground now. Uh, this lake is the lake that I think it is, and I'm pretty confident it is. And basically, we follow this river, and our destination should be pretty much where these two rivers kind of start doing one of these things. So we're looking for a highway. So if uh, anybody spies a uh, highway, uh, just give us all a heads up. And um, I forget what uh, semaphore signal we're supposed to use. I think you're supposed to wave your wings like this or something like that to kind of let people know that you're about to see it. I'm pretty sure that's the lake. Okay, hopefully. <laughs> I don't have GPS. I'm flying by stopwatch right now, and I'm looking down on it going, okay, so we're about a minute and a half late, but we stop for that spot. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. Oh, I love this. This is so cool. Absolutely so cool. We should have flown up north where the uh, jungle is. It looks a lot like Vietnam. A little bit of left foot, and we're back on course here. Yep, we're good. All right. So what was like? Now, Mobius, I gotta say, um, your helicopter is magic. It is absolute magic. Whoops, looks like we got something real quick. Haha, <laughs> that's steam for you. Never had that problem before. <laughs> All right, let's get ready for our landing and approach now. So the runway we're going to be coming into, oh, this is uh, going to be a very, very small grass strip. It's a very, very similar to the one that we saw earlier. Obviously, we have the perfect airplane for this particular purpose. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be kind of swinging up and around. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a city. Again, I'm pretty confident that's the city. Yep. See the buildings? Yeah. We're not lost. We're not lost. Uh, so Ligma, the trick to time acceleration is use the slew unless you have to use the time acceleration setting. And you just press the Y key and just hold 8 on your numpad and it's whoosh and you'll zip by us at about 1,000 miles an hour. Then you just press the Y key again and it'll disable that so that way um, you can come back to real space in real time just like you had before. I definitely have to check that out, Farmer. I'm not a huge float plane flying. Uh, try that one again. I'm not a huge float plane fan. There we go. I landed it. Because uh, they're just a little slow for me. But uh, definitely check that one out. I find the icon to be a little bit... Um, the word I'm going to use is tacky. But again, that's my opinion. So take it or leave it. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else I recognize. Oh, I recognize Tectonic. Welcome back. Broken Tire, welcome back. I missed you earlier. Hoosh, I don't recognize a right away. And then uh, Type R is uh, basically chilling there. The VL3, by the way, is one of the best and most versatile planes of this game. It goes stupid fast, and it can take off and land anywhere. It's awesome. Decent on the gas, too. Hmm. What's this button do? Now, the interesting thing here is usually I don't have to worry about fuel too much, but um, we've actually burnt a pretty good chunk of our fuel so far. Given that, you know, we're only 80 horsepower. <laughs> have I flown the Vertigo? I've not flown the Vertigo. I'm not familiar with it, Eric. All right, we should be heading into the city pretty soon. I'll go ahead and I'll lose a little bit of altitude here. Uh, let's see here. I think the field elevation, I'm going to have to go look it up again. Field elevation, my notes say it's 181 feet, so uh, 1,200 feet will be our traffic pattern altitude. I'm pretty much already there, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Actually, you know what was a really cool float plane was the um, G uh, uh, Republic RC-3. Uh, we had one of those at the museum, and it was... Like the cutest little plane you could ever see. It was basically designed for pilots leaving World War II as a kind of a way to kind of snooker them into like you know, taking it to the vacation home or something like that. It is just like the definition of like 
I don't know, it looks like a 1950s Cadillac inside, and, but it's, you know, it's a little bubbly thing. It's just kind of wild, just kind of wild. And the hand crank for the landing gear is just, just a little old school, just a little old school. Uh, have you heard Microsoft hired the title people to work on the game? Oh, that's wonderful. One of these days I'll do a video about the uh, working title of G3000, G1000, and I'm sure that'll get me uh, two views, two views. No, they are really, really cool systems, and it's really got to take the time to do it because it's more what I'm familiar with anyway. Personally, I've never worked with the G3000. The regular G1000 I've got a lot of experience with, though. Yep, that's our lake. We're not lost. All right, I believe... Oh, man, i got to figure out where we are again. <laughs> Don't you miss the GPS? This is going to be fun doing this in the DC-6 next time. Because we're going to be over Venezuela. And we're going to get very, very, very lost if we're not careful. Okay, so I am definitely drifting a little bit here. Let's see, the lake. So it should be right... I think this chap right here is where we need to be going. I'll definitely have to check that out. The VL3 is a lot of airplane. It really... it's almost perfect. The Amphibious Cub has a soup of 215 horsepower? That is a tremendous amount of horsepower in a little teeny tiny cub. Again, I think we're pushing about 80 here, and it sounds like we might be uh, doing less than that, but that's all right. Whoop, got a little bit of altitude. We need to come back down. And right here. So here comes the uh, big city, everybody. I'm being passed by a helicopter. This is embarrassing. Uh, that should be pretty good right there. I love this river here. You can just imagine everybody with the little fishing boats just kind of chilling along this thing. Imagine all, like, you know, like the coffee crop and everything here. It must be absolutely excellent. All right. So theoretically, all the houses should face west. <laughs> now we got to find that grass strip. I'm pretty sure it's right here. It's right where this little teeny tiny little building is right there on the left. I believe this is the strip itself. And since the wind is coming out of that way, we're just going to go and take a left base and come right down on the ground. You know, the only aircraft I've ever flown that's general aviation and I felt that was uh, overpowered is uh, they had this aircraft. It's a Beechcraft Duke, it's called. It's a B-60. And basically, they did a little modification where they took two Pratt & Whitney PT-6s in it and traded out the big old Lycomings on it. Basically gave the thing like 1,100 horsepower, but it's like smaller than a Beechcraft 58. So as a result, that's the only airplane I've ever basically overstressed in a straight line at high altitude. It's just that fast. And its climb rate is four or 5,000 feet per minute. It's just incredible. All right, right there. Hopefully they make one of those for FS over here as well, because I really enjoy that plane. That's actually one of my all-time favorites, and it looks amazing too. All right, let's put this thing on the ground. Apparently I'm getting a fuel pressure warning, but I'm pretty confident that works. All right, we're back in the green now. Life is good. All right, there's our runway. <laughs> Maybe not what you're expecting, but uh, I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. I'm actually going to come this way a little bit. I'm not quite at the right angle to that thing right now. I'm going to come this way a little more. All right. There is our destination. We made it. All right. Let's go ahead and bring ourselves down to the ground. I just love how slow this thing can go. It's ah, It's excessive. When I first was flying this thing and was experimenting with short takeoffs with it, it was like... I literally thought I was flying a helicopter for a minute there. Granted, it's not the world's fastest helicopter. Ah, uh, speaking of which. All right, looks pretty good. I'm going to bring my first notch of flaps down. Don't forget to bring a little bit of throttle in when you do that too. So basically the runway is the ground there. Like anything counts as runway. There's not specific runway here. So again, if we had the DC-6 or something, we'd literally be perfect for this. Next notch. Whoa, I love that. So now for landing like this with this sort of airplane, I want to get as close to the terminal as possible. I really don't feel like, you know, landing at the end of the runway and having to taxi all the way down to the end. But there's a nice one. Uh, what do I think about the Madagascar movies? So, Steph, um, I've never seen them. Request for a GTN 750. Uh, Eric, do they have a GTN 750 for a flight sim? Because if they do, I will go buy it when we're done because I love that thing. All right, everybody's uh, passing me. This is what I get for going in the proper approach speed. <laughs> I hope this is the runway. Part of me thinks I actually got the wrong runway here, but I'm pretty confident this is supposed to be the runway. So what I'm actually going to do is go fly over by the terminal. Y'all coming now. I'm Lex Dudas from Cry Cry. In the Cry Cry. 
I feel like I've just uh, violated like 10 racial taboos there. Yeah, watch this, watch this, watch this. Get it all the way down. We're going to land right by that little terminal so we can get our favorite group picture that everybody likes to be in. And I'm just going to bring this thing down to basically minimum speed. <laughs> you missed me. Look at this, look at this. I'm doing, um, if I had to estimate, about 15, 20 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm below the bottom of the speedometer, or the speedometer, what's that? Airspeed indicator, watch this. Nose up, kill the flaps, and we're done flying. <laughs> Love that. All right, let's go uh, taxi over here and get our everybody's favorite picture. You gotta admit, that's pretty cool, and I'm pretty sure it, I just ruined uh, about $1,000 worth of landing gear today, so that's a shame, that's a shame. All right, as usual, uh, whenever we get to the end, if anybody would like to be in our picture, you just gotta kind of make your way to the back of me here, and I'll zoom out a little bit and go ahead and get it. And I'll go throw this up as our little title card kind of a thing towards the end there. Um, usually, like I always like to say, if you'd like to go ahead and ask any questions or any special releases or special requests for anything that you'd like me to concentrate on, like I said, if uh, somebody has a Garmin GTN, I can tell you what my video is going to be coming up uh, this uh, coming about two weeks from now. But other than that, I've got an interesting announcement coming up uh, in about July-ish, if things work out the way that I'm hoping they will. But uh, you'll know exactly what's coming on when we kind of get to that particular point there. So I'll give everybody a minute to kind of come get collected. This is, I think, the most people who have ever landed at this airport in the history of this flight simulator. So nice job, everybody. <laughs> so as usual, if there are any special requests or any questions, I'll do the best I can. Again, I'm not an expert, but I certainly pretend to be one. All right, looks like a pretty decent picture. All right, I'll look over here. Ah, smoking tire just outside of the... Uh, maybe I can do like a thing like this. And bam. Got it. Okay, excellent. All right, so like I always like to do is I like to absolutely uh, ruin the airplane at the end while you folks are kind of figuring out if you got any questions for me. So I'm going to go do that. Actually, before I do that, I was really, really nervous when I did this flight that I was going to accidentally um, uh, just eat it on one of those landings. So I did cheat. I cheated. I cheated. All right, let's get going. All right, let's go. Man, this thing feels weird doing it as a normal takeoff. It's just like, it just goes. All right, let's go find ourselves a nice, nasty bottom body of water. Again, like I said, any specific questions or anything along those lines? You know, I never shut the choke off. Whoops. So my engine's been running a little rich this entire time. All right, we'll see if we can get this thing to depart in a very dramatic fashion and end up in that drink down there. I think we've done pretty well today. I don't know what's going on with the uh, smoothness there. There we go. Let's go ahead and set ourselves up for a little departure. There we go. Whee! <laughs> Apparently I'm having a connection issue. Oh, and you thought I was going to crash. Apparently, I'm having a real connection issue, so I'll go ahead and give it a few moments to kind of uh, re-get captured there. <laughs> All right, if there are no questions, I'll go ahead and uh, stick this into the drink, and we'll kind of call it an afternoon slash evening, or whatever it is. A little shorter than usual, but uh, like I said, it was a pretty easy flight, and like I said, this is a pretty slow airplane, so we weren't going to do anything too crazy. As usual, if you are you keeping an eye out on my page, I'll uh, go ahead and take a look at my uh, channel. Uh, there's a little bit of the thing on the community page. I usually post there a couple times a week. If you're looking to get a hold of me, uh, like I said, that's usually the best place. Uh, I can't read every comment that I get on every video. There will be a couple of them. But other than that, have an absolutely uh, wonderful day, evening, morning, or whatever the equivalent is, and absolutely enjoy yourselves. Fly safe, and uh, hopefully we see you all again in the future. Enjoy.